hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl cc and we're back at it again today with another video and in today's video we are going to be reacting to prophet muhammad seducing his his adopted son's wife yeah that is what we are going to be reacting to um the only story i know which is along those lines uh, is the story of zainab and zaid um i think zainab was married to zaid um he liked her and wanted to mm, i don't know if he really wanted to marry her or not but um he, something along those lines so i'm not sure if this is the exact story that um this is going to be explaining or talking about but let's get straight into the video shall we We can learn a lot about a man by how he reacts when his worst deeds are exposed. Does he acknowledge his sin and turn away from it? Or does he justify it and continue hurting others and even himself? Muhammad had an adopted son named Zayd, who was called Zayd bin Muhammad, Zayd, son of Muhammad. One day, Muhammad went to visit him and was greeted by Zayd's wife, Zainab, who was one of the most beautiful women in Arabia and who was wearing very little clothing at the time. Here's what happened, according to the Muslim historian Tabri. She jumped up in haste and excited the admiration of the messenger of God so that he turned away, murmuring something that could scarcely be understood. However, he did say overtly, Glory be to God the Almighty! Glory be to God who causes hearts to turn. When Zayd found out that his wife had excited the admiration of his adopted father and prophet, he decided to divorce her so that Muhammad could have her. Muhammad, however, understood that taking your adopted son's wife was frowned upon by everyone in history, so he told Zayd, no, keep your wife. But by that time, Zainab had found out that Muhammad was attracted to her, and seeing the opportunity to move up in the world, she began despising her husband. Zayd, wanting to give his adopted father and prophet whatever he desired, divorced him. Okay, so he said that um, Zainab began to despise, um, despise Zayd, but from what I have heard and seen, it was said that they already had problems before um, all this even took place. So, yeah, like the problem didn't start after um, Prophet Muhammad went and stumbled upon Zainab. It, they already had their issues before this happened. So, yeah. His wife and Muhammad married her. Not surprisingly, people started complaining. What sort of man marries a woman who's been having sex with his own adopted son? How did Muhammad respond to the criticism? He started receiving revelations to justify the marriage. Allah revealed Surah 33 verses 4 to 5, abolishing adoption in Islam. From that point on, Zayd was no longer called Muhammad's son. Allah also revealed Surah 33 verse 37, where he explains why he wanted Muhammad to marry Zainab. Allah says, And remember when you, Muhammad, said to him to whom Allah had shown favor and to whom you had shown favor, keep your wife to yourself and be careful of your duty to Allah, and you concealed in your soul what Allah would bring to light, and you feared men, and Allah had a greater right that you should fear him, but when Zayd had accomplished his want of her, i.e. divorced her, we gave her to you as a wife, so that there should be no difficulty for the believers in respect of the wives of their adopted sons when they have accomplished their want of them, and Allah's command shall be performed. Muslims defend Muhammad by offering all kinds of explanations for his marriage to Zainab. But in the Quran, we have Allah's explanation. Allah says to Muhammad, we gave her to you as a wife so that there should be no difficulty for the believers in respect of the wives of their adopted sons when they have accomplished their want of them. 
So Allah gave Zainab to Muhammad so that other Muslim men would know that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons. Three quick problems with Allah's explanation. One, how many men really struggle with whether or not they should be marrying the divorced wives of their own adopted sons? Apart from Muhammad, I've never heard of anyone who needed divine guidance on this issue. And yet Allah is convinced that lots of us are sitting around, scratching our heads, thinking to ourselves, wow, my adopted son's wife is so hot, I wonder if God wants me to have her. Second, assuming that Allah wants men to know that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their own adopted sons, does he really need Muhammad to go out and do it? Wouldn't it be enough for Allah to say in the Quran, hey guys, in case you're wondering, Yes, it's perfectly acceptable in Islam to start lusting after your adopted son's wives until your adopted sons divorce them, and then you can marry them. Is this such an incredibly important issue that Allah not only had to reveal a Quran verse about it, but also needed Muhammad to break up a marriage and show us how it's done? Third, Allah abolished adoption in Surah 33 verses 4 to 5. Muslims are still free to take care of orphans, but they don't adopt them into their families. So if there's no more adoption in Islam, why in the name of common sense is Allah telling Muhammad that he has to marry Zainab so that other Muslim men will know that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons? There aren't going to be any more adopted sons, so the situation isn't going to exist for Muslims. Why would Allah tell Muhammad to do something in order to set an example for other Muslims facing the same problem when there aren't going to be any other Muslims facing the same problem? The only conclusion to draw is that Muhammad was criticized for doing something really, really bad, having adulterous thoughts about his adopted son's wife, causing his adopted son to divorce his wife and then marrying the woman he was lusting after. But instead of admitting that he had done something wrong, he justified what he had done and abolished one of humanity's most humane practices in the process. Worst adopted father ever. Okay, now <laughs> there's a lot of issues being raised here. A lot of issues. My problem is, why has adoption been abolished? For me, I feel like adoption is one of the greatest things anybody can do on this earth. And I personally, I have been saying this for a very, very long time, that I want to adopt. So now imagine if I come into Islam and I'm not able to fulfill the dreams that I have always dreamt about I've always wanted to adopt like always you know hearing this is sort of like okay if I come into Islam I will not be able to adopt um I heard that um for you to go through adoption there's like you have it's it's complicated it's complicated I think the person that you adopt cannot bear um the family name and I think I'm not 100% sure on this one um I think you're not able to give them inheritance or something like that anyways a question that when I first stumbled upon like Zainab and all of this stuff was why would god put this in the quran why would allah put this in the quran um if adoption is abolished now i could understand why the situation had to happen if only if it was for an example like oh um so that people can learn from it and you know what we should do and what we should not do but this happened and then um adoption became abolished it kind of doesn't make sense for me it's like what was the whole purpose of this and i sort of understand what he was saying in terms of um it, the situation happened and then prophet muhammad felt the need to um make a whole um quran, uh, verse in the quran but again muslims believe that the quran is from god so 
therefore they would not believe that it is um muhammad who altered this but it does seem kind of weird if we are being honest with ourselves and apparently zainab was his cousin now with that <laughs> now with that is he's known zainab right and he didn't have any um sexual gratification towards her or sexual um like he didn't see her in a sexual way or any of that sort or like wife material or anything and it's like it's a bit weird right he knew zainab but he didn't marry her so then it raises the question why then did he see the need to marry her after you know after he's after she's gotten married to Zayd and everything why then did he suddenly become attracted to her it's like you already you already know someone if you like them you go for them you know if you're attracted to them you go for them but he didn't because he wasn't attracted to her and then he she goes gets married and then all of a sudden the attraction comes that is where I'm like, mm, is the story true? Is the story true? Also, I heard that the sources that um, is being stated or the story in general is a fabrication, that it is not true. Um, that, But I don't know 100% about that. But I feel it's a, it's a sticky one. It is a sticky one. It is a sticky one. Now, if Zainab and Prophet Muhammad were not related, maybe it would have been a bit, mm, okay. Mm, mm. But then again, they are cousins. But one thing that I do want to point out is the double standards in Christianity and Islam. Um, I think David Wood is a Christian. And apparently not even apparent it is actually stated in the bible that um what is it ah my mind have just forgotten it's stated in the bible i think genesis 20 verse 12 that abraham and sarah were sisters were brothers and sisters <laughs> like have brothers and sisters nonetheless they they still have blood between them so it's like isn't that sort of like a double standard now apparently abraham and sarah were brothers and sisters now a lot of people argue that no they were not brothers and sisters because he was just trying to um cover up the fact that they were they were married otherwise they would have killed her but we have to remember that the verse states that they were their brothers and sisters and then she became his wife so nonetheless he tells the people that their brothers and sisters then she became his wife so he still tells them that they are husband and wife he doesn't hide that so then you cannot really say that he he said that to cover up the fact that they were brothers and sisters so i feel like mm, the double standard is very real here and also jacob jacob married um i think leah and someone else uh leah and rachel leah and rachel i think were sisters and um jacob the relationship between jacob and leah and rachel is that they are um they are cousins so then it's like a prophet marrying his cousin double standard is real here and also, can we talk about Lot and his um, daughters? Now, I know that Lot did not really have much control over the situation and most of his daughters. But nonetheless, that is very, very alarming and raises the question, why would God allow this to happen in the first place? There, I feel like there's a lot of things from both sides that is like, why would God allow this to happen in the first place? This doesn't make any sense. How is this supposed to help us in modern day life? Also, I just want to point out, um, if if Zainab did not see anything wrong with marrying the prophet, 
then what is this whole issue? Zainab surely agreed to marry him, right? It's not like they were forced to marry each other. It's not like Zainab was, was forced upon um, Prophet Muhammad. She had to agree to marry him. And therefore, it's like, if she did not have a problem with it, why does society have a problem with it? Why do people have a problem with it? Why do I have a problem with it? You know, it's like she agreed to marry him. Nobody forced her to do so. So it's like she had a choice. If it was forced, then I would be like, uh, 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 back up, back up, back up. But she had to surely agree to marry him. So then if she didn't have a problem, why do we have a problem? Why do I have a problem? I don't know. That was just something I was like, hmm. She didn't have a problem. Why do we have a problem with it? Don't know. Also, we have to remember that Zaid um, offered to give up Zainab for Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad said no. Now, if he wanted her, why would he say no? Why couldn't he have said, okay, yeah, sure. Da, da, da. But again, like he said, maybe it was because it was frowned upon at the time. Well, it's still now, obviously. But it's, it was frowned upon. It was like, why would you do that? Da, da, da. A lot of people will talk about it. So perhaps that is why he said no in the first instance. But nonetheless, he still afterwards went ahead with it. So it's like, mm, he could have said yes in the first instance, but he didn't. Why not? Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on this topic, what you know, what you've learned. And, you know, share share your knowledge, share your thoughts, share no, your knowledge. You know, it can help me. It can help other people as well who have the same questions. And, yeah, thank you all so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to like, comment, share. And please do not forget to subscribe. And please take good care of yourselves. Bye.